And so we're going kind of from that to that, just kind of cleaning it up, sharpening it a bit, uh, and really making sure that the image is clear for digital display viewing. This video is long overdue, and I mean really long overdue. When I started this channel about a year ago, I started off with a CoolScan 4, and now I've moved all the way up to a CoolScan 5000. While the hardware performance differences are quite stark, this one being able to scan at a much higher resolution, DMAX, and way faster, a lot of the major improvements that I've actually seen in the image quality of my scans come from the software settings that I've kind of figured out and put together. So today what I want to do is cover my scanning process and the settings that I use to get incredible image quality out of my scans. And these settings aren't necessarily specific to cool scans. They're universal. So even if you have a different brand of scanner or a lower tier or older model, you should still see an image quality improvement from these settings. So let's dive right in. The first thing that we're going to want to do is obviously load our film. I'm using these 3D printed film spool adapters to hold the entire roll, so that means that once I press go on this scanner, I don't have to interrupt it, I can just let it do its thing and come back in a few hours to an entirely processed roll. It really is quite convenient and definitely a major selling point for these higher end scanners. So with it loaded, we're just going to feed it into the front of the scanner here. It automatically loads itself and we'll just pop these two tabs into place and the top one. And now we can go into view scan and start calibrating the position. For this tutorial, I'll be using ViewScan Professional uh, version 9.8.47.01. If you don't already have ViewScan, I actually did a video a while back comparing all the major scanning programs, but as I've gained more experience with the programs, I've come to find that ViewScan is by far the best option. It is a little bit expensive, and if a permanent license is still available for the software, i.e. not a subscription license, I would recommend going ahead and purchasing one, as I've heard that the price is continually increasing. Alright, so I've loaded up the default settings. The first thing we're going to do is move into professional mode, make sure scan to file is selected, and your scanner. So mine's the CoolScan 5000, so I'm going to select LS5000. Media type is going to be slide film. The reason that I'm scanning as slide film is because I intend to later invert the images using Negative Lab Pro in Lightroom. So if I scanned it as negative film, view scan itself would do the inversion rather than Negative Lab Pro. It's not as big a deal anymore now that Negative Lab Pro has the ability to handle slide film, but I still prefer to do the inversion in Negative Lab Pro. It's part of my process. I've found that the results speak for themselves. The next option is preview area. I set this to maximum. Bits per pixel, I set to 48-bit. 64-bit um, RGBI is only if you're intending on using Photoshop to do dust removal afterwards. I don't intend on doing that. I'm going to have the scanner do it now. So I'm going to choose 48-bit RGB. And batch scan, I'm going to turn off for right now, but we will turn it on later once we do our full scan. Preview resolution, I usually set to the lowest, so 500. Scan resolution, the highest, 4000. Rotation, none. Auto skew, check. Autofocus on preview, auto save upon scan, number of samples. So this is an interesting option right here. I set this to 8, but you can go as high as 16. It does dramatically increase the amount of time spent on scanning each frame. You do technically get some more quality, but I've been very happy with 8. If you have a really dark scene, perhaps you could bump it up for that image, but I would recommend leaving it around 8 and perhaps dropping it even a bit lower if you're in a rush. Frame alignment can be negative film, just because that's what we're scanning. Fine mode is also an interesting option. You can select this if you suspect that the sensor on your scanner is defective and has some dead pixels. This will use a single line from the sensor to scan the entire image. There are some instances where the image quality can be improved, although most of the time it ends up kind of blurring the image ever so slightly. I doubt you would ever notice, but that's more of a debug tool than a real uh, usable tool. Multi-exposure you can select if you have a high dynamic range image, although I've done comparisons and I haven't ever really noticed the difference, so I typically leave it unchecked just to save time. And the rest of these options we're going to leave as they are. Crop, we're going to go crop size maximum, just so it's not trying to auto crop and uh, kind of remove parts of the image accidentally that we might still want. We'll do the cropping later on in Lightroom. Filter, infrared clean, I set to medium. I keep restore fading off, I keep grain reduction on none, I keep sharpen on none, and I keep colorizes off, and I select all frames. Color, 
I set this to none. I don't want any adjustments being made. I just want the raw scan. I'll do all the adjustments later in Negative Lab Pro and Lightroom. And then output, I unselect JPEG. I'm not interested in working in JPEG and I select TIFF. I want the 48 bit RGB. I want no compression and all those other settings can stay as they are. With these settings loaded up, what you can do is you can go file, save options, and you can name it so like uh, custom scan settings. If your settings ever get reset to default, for instance like this, you can always go file, load options, and select custom scan settings, and they all come right back. All right, with our settings all configured, we're gonna click preview to preview the first frame. All right, so it looks like we need to change our offset a bit here. So in order to move the picture up, we need to add a positive offset. So right here, I would say probably about four, maybe five. Let's see this again. All right, so four was a bit too much. You can cancel that early. Let's try three. Three is also too much. We can back it off to two. There we go. All right, so two is looking decent, but I'm gonna just bump it up a bit. So 2.5, this should be perfect. There we go. Just to account for some margin of error, this should work if you're scanning the entire roll on auto, um, like having it go through the scanner. But I like to have a little bit of margin on each side, so I would probably drop it down to 2.3, just in, just in case the frame drifts a bit. So once I have it, my frame aligned, I go batch scan list, and I just do one dash star, which basically means that it's gonna start at frame one. It's gonna keep scanning until it runs out of film. Um, and from here, I would just click scan and it would pull through the entire roll and that would be that. Um, I already have these images scanned though, so I'm not gonna do that right now. Instead, what we're going to do is skip over to Lightroom. All right, so I seem to have actually misplaced the scan files for that previous reel. So we're gonna use a different reel that I scanned and actually still have the files for. The settings were the exact same, it's just a different film stock, different shots, but it doesn't really matter. Just thought I'd disclose that. Okay, so the first thing we do is drag the folder in to Lightroom. Go ahead and import that. And here's all of our shots. It's just gonna build the preview files. I'm gonna select them all and just make sure that they kind of all look like, yeah, I think I'll just rotate them once and then go through here. Let's put those back like that. Flip that one, flip that one. These can get flipped. There, I think they're all the right side up now. So what we'll do is we'll do Command A and then, or Control A, and then Control N, and that'll load up Negative Lab Pro here. Um, so our settings right here, they need to be, um, basic, and then I set number four for pre-saturation, and I like to do a 5% border buffer. And we'll click convert. All right, and then I'm gonna unselect make a copy and click apply. Now what I can do is I can go through these pictures individually, and I can throw out any misses or photos that I don't really think look great. Um, for instance, this one right here is blurry, so I'm gonna delete that. This one is super overexposed, so if I do Control N again, I can try to bring down the brightness and see if there's any detail left in those highlights, which it doesn't look like there is, unfortunately. So we can delete this one as well, but let's find a good candidate for uh, doing some editing. This one right here. So we'll open up Negative Lab Pro again and we'll bring down the brightness, bring down the exposure, and the highlights a bit. Maybe put the exposure back up. It kind of dims the overall image. And we can bring the whites up. And click apply. Let it make a copy. And right now I can't see the positive image that it made because I have previous import selected. So I need to go down into the folder itself and then I can expand this and I can select the positive image and we'll break drag that to the front right here. And I can go into develop. And we'll start off by cropping this. So I'll do a four by six crop. And I'll hold down alt. And we'll just crop in a bit, get rid of that extra border. 
there we go. And honestly, the picture looks great as it is. Um, you could upload this, you could print this, it would probably look good. Although if I was printing it, depending on your printer and the software that you use, I might increase the saturation a bit, maybe something like uh, 20 or plus 30. Let's see here. The shadows are also looking a little purpley. That is something that you could fix by going into your um, negative image here. Going control N, going into the shadows and just bringing down the magenta in the shadows. And then obviously you would reprocess it, make another copy and everything. But what you can also do is you can also come in here, go into color grading and take the shadow slider here and just drag it into the green a bit. And that'll effectively do the same thing. Maybe a little bit on the mid-tones, just a touch as well, but not too far into the greens. I might actually take the tint slider and go plus two on the magenta, but I'm nitpicking right now. Something else you might do is maybe bring up a bit of dehaze and a bit of clarity, and that should help bring out the sky because the sky is a little bit blown out here. Maybe bring down the highlights a bit, bring up the whites just to maintain a little bit of punch in the image, and a touch up to the shadows. So we go from this to this, which it's not like a stark difference. You're not really changing the image, you're just correcting it. And that's really something that I value when I shoot film. I don't really want to go in and do heavy modifications to my pictures. I just want to correct them and kind of make sure that there's no color cast and make sure that the image is represented in a way that I feel is fair to what the scene was like in real life and what I envisioned um, the picture being like. So what we could do is one of the more artistic photos here. Uh, so this is a double exposure that I shot uh, during blue hour. So if we do control N again, um, actually it, honestly, we don't even, well, we do need to, cause we need to create the positive image, but I don't think there's any adjustments that need to be made here. All right. So here's the positive image. So let's go in here. And again, we will do a four by six crop right about there is probably good. And here I might add a little bit of dehaze and clarity just to kind of make everything pop a bit more just because it's supposed to be a dramatic image and perhaps brighten it up a touch. And so we're going kind of from that to that, just kind of cleaning it up, sharpening it a bit uh, and really making sure that the image is clear for digital display viewing. So yeah. That's my scanning process, and those are the settings that I use. As I said before, I've been very satisfied with how those settings worked. I found that I've been able to handle really complex or tricky films such as Phoenix 200 as well with those settings and get good results from them as long as they're exposed properly, obviously. The only type of film I wouldn't use these settings with is slide film. Rather than selecting none in the color balance, I would select auto levels instead. Um, otherwise, you're going to get kind of a really either cold or warm image when the scanner tries to white balance. I found that by selecting auto levels, it kind of gives you a more neutral um, JPEG-like image. And then you can obviously, if you're scanning in TIFF, you can go in and edit it from there. But yeah, that's my scanning process. I hope I'll see you in the next video.